I think you know that I love a good shell script, but one of the challenges with shell scripting is that if you're trying to do something more complex, it often becomes unwieldy. Today, I wanna to take a look at a tool that I recently discovered. This tool is from Google, no less, that hopes to make complex shell scripts a little bit easier to write. The tool we're taking a look at here is called ZX. It's basically a combination of JavaScript in bash. We can install this as a global NPM package, and then we just put this shebang at the top of our file. And then we can pretty much write JavaScript with shell scripts in template strings. And there are a few other goodies that this provides. Take a look. So ZX uses dollar sign as a template literal tag function. Inside of our template literal, we're just writing normal bash code. So you can see here, the idea is catting package.json and then piping that to grep for the string name. And in this case, we can just await for this result to come back. In this case, we're not doing anything with it, but this next line is kind of interesting. How can we get the name of the branch that we're currently on? We can easily do that in bash with git branch show current, and then we can easily assign that to a variable in our JavaScript here. And so it's pretty cool to see that you can easily jump back and forth between some shell code and then some JavaScript code. So let's give this a try. Since this was kind of a first look for me, I took some inspiration from the example in the documentation. And so we're gonna write a script here for getting some stats on your git commits. So why don't we just create a file called stats.mjs. Now, if you're not familiar with MJS as a file extension, to be honest, I don't use it that much, but it's a JavaScript module file extension, which means we can use await at the top level instead of having to wrap that in an async function. So that's why we're using it today. We'll go ahead and paste in our shebang here. Make sure you've already done your NPM install of ZX. And now let's start taking a look at what we can do here. The first thing we want to do is make sure we're actually in a Git repository. And the way I would do this in bash is with git rev parse dash dash git dir. If we run this on the command line, you can see this points us to our local Git directory. In this case, it's right here in this file dot git. But if we go to my home directory, we get this error that we're not in a Git repository. So this is a great way to determine if we're in a Git directory. Let's wrap this in our tag function here and await it. And we can immediately test to see if this works. Let's just add a console.log here to see if we can reach this point in the script. Let's do change mod plus X. And now if we do uh, stats.mjs, you can see a couple of things here. Notice that we have some logging printed out here. We have the command that we're running being printed out and we have the output from that. And then of course, there's our own here. Now, if we move back to our home directory, now you can see, again, we've printed out the command, and this time the output from the command is a fatal error, and then we also get the error thrown in the JavaScript as well. So we get quite a bit of output from ZX here, which is maybe not a bad thing. One thing that you can do if you want to suppress that output, maybe once you've finished writing your script, is we can also use dollar sign as a way to access a bunch of the configs that you can use in ZX. And you can take a look at that documentation. I'll have that link down below. In our case, as you might guess, we're gonna do verbose equals uh, false. And now if we run that again, you can see that we only get the JavaScript error, which we're gonna catch in just a second here. We don't get the command itself printed out and we don't get the command output printed out. Let's do a couple of things here. We can wrap this in a try catch and in our catch, let's console log the error so we can see what that error looks like. This process output shape that you can see here is really the output of any one of our tag function calls here. Or really, it's going to be a promise of a process output, but because of our await, of course, we're just getting process output. So you can see we get four important pieces of information here, standard out, standard error, the signal, and then the exit code. And you can see, of course, the exit code is 128 in this case. If we move back to the dot .files directory, and we run that stats file, you can see, well, we don't see any output apart from our here, but let's go ahead and capture the output there and then let's console.log the directory. And now you can see we again get a process out. This time our exit code is zero, which means we were successful. And we have some standard out, which is the path to our .git directory. So this gives you an idea for how our dollar sign function here works. It takes the output that we would get from running that bash command and gives it to us in a JavaScript object that we can then use for some other processing. Now, for our particular use case, we don't really care about the directory, so I'm going to remove that. Really what we care about is whether or not we're in a Git direct, because we want to short circuit and exit if we're not in a Git repository. So we know we can do error, what was it? Error dot standard error, and we're looking for the text, not a Git repository. So error dot standard error dot includes, not a Git repository. So if it does include that, then console.log 
And this is where we can use another one of the great features of ZX, which is that it will import the chalk library for us. So I can do chalk.red and we can say run this script in a Git repo. If this is not that error, maybe there's some other error that we're not thinking about, let's just rethrow the error. So if we run this, of course, we're here. If we go back to my home directory, you can see that we get the error run this script in a Git repository. Now notice that that didn't actually exit, which is not great. So what we should do after this is do exit one so that our our script will end with the correct exit code. So if we rerun this, yep, we can see that we get our exit code. Now, I guess what we could do instead, because it seems like there isn't really an error message here, is I wonder if we could combine these and just say throw red. I wonder if that works. And we'll comment out our exit one for the moment. Let's see what happens if we throw that. Oh, okay, nice, that works, cool. Okay, so now we know that if we reach this point in our script, we are inside a Git repository. So what are some of the stats that we want to run? Well, I'm thinking of something kind of basic here. What I would love to do is get a list of the commits that I have and the files that are in these commits. And why don't we see um, how often each one of these files has been edited? So what we can do is let's get our output here and we'll just call this output for the moment. And again, we'll use our tag function here and we can do git log dash dash uh, name only. And for the moment, I'm gonna disable our verbose false config there and let's see what we get. All right, now you can see what we get here is your typical git log output. What we've done with the dash dash name only flag is after the commit and the author and the date and the message, we get the file names printed out here as well. Now you could imagine that if we wanna process some text like this, there are ways that we could do this in bash, but maybe it's easier for us to do that in JavaScript. Now we know output here is the process output shape. So really all I care about here is the standard out. I can't forget to put my await in here. And now if we just console.log our log here, what we should find is we get a string that is just the same content as before. So now let's try splitting this on the string new line commit. That should be what defines the kind of beginning of each one of our commit blocks here. And now you can see we have this broken up into an array where each element here is a commit and each element also includes all of those file names. So that's pretty handy. And this is one of the places I think that ZX shines. It's really easy for us to now take this output that we get from our command and we can process it using the tooling of JavaScript instead of the tooling of bash. So for example, we can now map over each one of our commits here. And we know that the commit has a couple of different lines. We wanna split this by new line. And so the first new line is gonna be the hash, second is gonna be the author, the third will be the date, the fourth is gonna be an empty line that we don't care about, fifth is gonna be the message, have another empty line we don't care about, and then all the rest are gonna be the files. And now we can process each one of these individually. So let's say that we wanna return something here where we've got an object, we return the hash as is, Let's go ahead and assign this to a variable, const commits. And finally, we can do console.log um, and let's just grab one of the commits out of this list. If we rerun our script, we now have an object right here. So building a JSON structure for commits or really any kind of rich data structure using only a shell script would be both challenging to build and challenging to maintain. And likely if you're working on a team, there's people who are not as familiar with shell scripting as they are with JavaScript. And so if you wanna build a script that's maintainable by a group of people and not just one shell wizard, then this seems to be a really great way to do that. Now, obviously we haven't quite finished what I wanted to do here. Let's create a files object and let's do uh, for const C. And then in here we can do for const F. This can be pretty simple. We can say, if there's no entry in files for F, then we can do files F equals zero. And then either way, we'll do files of F plus plus. Now it's true that, you know, what is here, eight lines of JavaScript is basically a sort pipe unique dash C in shell scripting. But I think the main takeaway here is not so much that this is way more verbose, but that it's possibly more maintainable with your team or for yourself. What we can now do is let's do console.log uh, if we just console.log files, what we should see is, yes, we get a whole bunch of file paths with some number after them. And then object entries, and then let's sort that. We can take A and B, and we wanna say B, and let's do item one, 
minus a at item one. We have now an array of tuples. And if we scroll to the top, we'll see the higher numbers. And we could make this a little simpler if we do like um, slice, uh, say zero to 10. We'll just take the first 10 items in this list. And here are the top 10 files as far as like files that appear in commits most frequently. So this was a first look for me at ZX and the types of things that you can do with it. And maybe this isn't a particularly useful script, but it's a fun way, I think, to dip your toe into what you can do when you can combine the things that Bash is best at with the things that JavaScript is also good at. I do want to try one more thing here, which is reproduce this count and sort logic in Bash, just so we can see what it's like to have some data in JavaScript that we then want to process with our Bash tooling, because it's important to know that we could go back and forth in this scenario. So we have our commits, and if we map over each commit, and we've got commit.files and join those with some new line characters. And then once again, we can join those with some new line characters. And now we have basically just a list of all of the file changes that have been made. Let's do const x await dollar sign backtick. So we've got this into our shell function here. Uh, if we go ahead and echo this, we should just be able to see these lines output. So let's do console.log uh, x.standard out. Need to wrap this in our template literal delimiters there. All right, cool. So now we just have our list of files. Excellent. So now what we should be able to do here is sort that, then do unique dash C. And if we do that, we should have our counts. Nice, look at that, typical shell style output. And now if we do a sort dash N for numerical sort and tail dash 10, to get the last 10 items, we can see that we have the same result. You can see we've got 26 on alias, and if we go to the other end, we've got 12 on install and aliases. So we have the same results that we collected both with JavaScript and with shell. This is my first foray into using ZX, and it looks like a pretty promising tool. Shell scripts can be incredibly powerful and you can do a lot with them, but sometimes it's just faster and more maintainable to write a script in JavaScript. So having an easy way to pull data in from the command line and even use command line tools to help process that data along the way means that this will be a tool that I'll be reaching for again soon in the future. If you have ideas on how you might wanna use ZX, or maybe you already have used it and have opinions, definitely let's hear about that in the comments. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.